think the first time we started talking about this, I contacted you about developing expression control for the afterneath pedal because it worked a very specific way and it wasn't really conducive to doing expression control with just any pedal. Pretty right. sure that's how this whole thing started with it. And specifically over the drag control yeah. is, yeah. is really what you wanted control over. You, you had some um, expression over the transmitter mm -hmm. as well at the time and, and um, I think you had some, some customers who wanted the expression pedal to do the frequency of the effect yeah, rather for, than the frequency of the filter. For the drag control and the way that it worked is it was kind of a series resistance instead of something that could be easily turned into voltage control. Right. Um, and, you know, programming that, totally out of my wheelhouse, came to you because we had worked together on other projects say, at Circle Prime. And I believe that you suggested the idea for a couple of those modes for it to actually work uh, multiple different ways. So we were talking about this, about this years yeah. ago, and um, we even had this kind of um, pre-idea meeting, and yeah. there was, there was um, quite a few of us there. I feel like there was like 12 people around the conference table mm -hmm. talking about what we wanted this module to do, and, and um, I had a piece of paper. I still have the notes from that, and it was just... You know, it's one of those things that people keep on adding these features and pretty soon you have a module that's going to be, you know, a panel this size <laughs> and 20 knobs and yeah. like 80 jacks and, and yeah. it's just going to be more confusing. That's the fun part about group discussions on yeah. developing products. <laughs> yeah, so so it was really a challenge to say like, okay, what what should this be? How do we narrow it down? And, and what's funny is I kind of made... I made, I developed this, this uh, way of controlling the drag control in just a little prototype box because I wanted to see how the effect would work. Mm -hmm. and, and pretty much every control that I included in that prototype box, uh, when you and Ben came over and were playing around yeah. with it, you're like, this is it, this, this has everything we need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't really need a VCA in, in the effect. Yeah. Send. Yeah. And I remember, I even forgot that I put a um, a dry kill switch yeah. on it. <laughs> and Ben said, I really wish this just had some way to kill the dry switch, you know, a yeah. switch to kill the dry signal. And uh, I totally forgot that I had put one on that box. And I think I reached over and like was trying to change an EEPROM setting or something. Mm -hmm. And then? And then it killed the dry and I'm like, oh, that switch yeah, that you want is. <laughs> is right there, yeah. It has a different tone than most reverbs, and I, there's so many, you know, uh, reverbs out there, and I have my favorites, but it, it quickly became one of my favorites to where I got two of the pedals, and then, <laughs> you know, and I constantly use them in the studio, and I always thought, like, if I could only have voltage control over this yeah. part or this parameter. Um, yeah. What I kind of think is interesting too about the modular version of the Afterneath is it actually kind of turns it into more of an instrument, whereas with the guitar it's sort of like a pad. Mm -hmm. You run the guitar through it and it just stretches it out, and it's you know it's reverb to, to some extent, but it's more of a a, a legit effect, yeah, than like an accent. But you know when you can control it a bunch of different ways, and now it has all these different modes of operation. It really, to me, just seems like a an instrument, I feel like. I'd agree, so, yeah. It's kind of cool the way that it, even though, like, fundamentally, it's exactly the same as the pedal, <laughs> that in this format, I feel like it has a different a different life, I guess. You know, I, I think about that every time I make a record. Like, why why would anybody care? I go to thrift stores and there's millions of records on the shelves right, yeah <laughs> and you're like i don't i don't know maybe it's all been said before but um this is really a unique new light to an old effect and first of all the afterneath i feel had a very specific character that a lot of reverbs don't have and um secondly the type of controls that we put over it 
um, are, are very unconventional with um, yeah it's voltage controlled but some some of the ways that we went about it really um, opens up new ideas I mean as a musician you know I, I was playing with the prototype um, in one of the pre-production runs over the weekend and it's just every every patch that I make with it I just I don't want to stop playing with it. <laughs> I'm just sitting there for hours and pretty soon it's one o'clock in the morning and I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> where did the time go? I, I should go to bed. It's, it's really fun and I think it invites a lot of creativity, unlike just a reverb right. know, effect. Yeah, no, I could totally see that. But I will say this is very unique in it and I really don't know anything else out there that, that um, controls the reverb like this does. 